Hey everybody, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. It's nice to see everybody tuning in from all across the United States and Canada, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, and all points around the globe. It's so cool to see so many people watching our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series coming in from so many incredible locations. It's really amazing when I see the analytics and I see the towns and the cities, the states and the countries where you guys are watching from when you join us live we are live worldwide right now on the gym master show live entertainment lifestyle talk show series and also those who watch later on in the archives because we do archive all of the episodes of the gym master show live entertainment lifestyle talk show series it is uh monday we're counting down the days to the birthday celebration <laughs> coming on friday september 24th it is getting closer and closer uh, we have amazing guests that are uh, going to be joining us and also counting down to that uh, birthday episode on Friday, September 24th. We have amazing guests throughout this week. Uh, tonight, we have Doug Mummert, who is going to be joining us in just a second. He is the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Foundation Chairman and President. We're going to be talking about some extraordinary work uh, that they do and scholarships they offer and so much more. He also uh, was a fire chief in Phoenix, Arizona and very involved in the dedicated service, dedicated service of uh, the fire department as well. And of course, the Emmys, uh, the 73rd annual Primetime Emmy Awards were last night. And uh, congratulations to all the winners. So we're gonna be talking about the Emmys and of course the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences uh, is what presents those Emmy Awards. And the Emmys are something that uh, everybody looks for in the fields of uh, television. And as you guys know, I work in television and radio and stage and film as a uh, TV and radio personality, presenter, journalist, uh, host, actor, writer, stage MC, narrator, uh, voiceover artist, writer, producer, and have for a long time. And this series, The Gym Master Show Live, uh, sort of grew out of my work in television and radio. So it's good to have everybody, and we welcome everybody with style and panache, as we always do here on JMS Live. We welcome you to the show. We say today, of course, Doug is joining us, and we're so excited to have him here. He's coming to us. He was born in Hollywood, California, and is coming to us uh, from beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, USA. We say hello to the Lovety Squad that's watching all around the world. We encourage, welcome, and invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the channel you're watching right now. It's Jim Masters TV. And uh, when you subscribe, don't forget to click the notification bell. Because when you click the notification bell, you get alerted to all of the episodes. We do live, special episodes, pop-up shows, holiday theme shows, on-location shows, and so many other things that we end up doing. So you never miss out on any of the, the action, especially when we're live, because I know you guys like to participate live. So we would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the one you're watching right now, Jim Masters TV. Also, give this episode a thumbs up. That's right, a thumbs up like on our YouTube channel and leave a comment for us too. Many of you have been doing that and we thank you so very much. Those of you who have been writing comments on the YouTube channel underneath the episodes telling us how much you've been enjoying this series and all the guests and all the incredible uh, levity and information building and just all the fun stuff we do here on our series. And of course, we always say, uh, you know, share some of that famous JMS levity and tell the world about our series, let everybody know. I know many of you have been posting the links and sharing the links on your social media, and we really, really appreciate that. Let's check in with some of our viewers, our lovely squad watching all around the world. Sherry Larson, who's been very busy sharing the links to all the episodes of the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series on her social media, and we really appreciate that. She goes, good evening, uh, loveties. How is everyone? We are doing well. We just came in from a fantastic hike along the southern New England coast. Beautiful 70-degree weather. Fall is upon us here. The leaves will be changing soon, and it's a, the northeast is a nice place to be during this time of the year for sure. And uh, how did everybody's Monday go? 
Ours, terrific, terrific. And I hope yours did as well thus far in Kansas. Sherry Larson watches in Kansas. Alessandra is watching in North Carolina, USA. She says hello to everybody. Kathy Short uh, is watching in Cleveland and she's here. That means the Cleveland Indians are not playing at home. <laughs> that means she's with us. If they're playing at home, she might be at the stadium rooting her team on in Cleveland and uh, having, I guess, you know, those uh, earbuds in listening to us on her phone. <laughs> she does both. Good evening, Jim and ladies. It's nice to be back uh, for a live show after a few days with no Wi-Fi. Isn't that amazing how dependent we are on cell phones and Wi-Fi and everything now? Uh, like the world stops if you don't have it, it seems. Hope you baked a lot of bread during that time. Dawn says, hi, Jim. We welcome you as well. It's fantastic. And um, mm. yes, Maureen says, over 36 years with the Phoenix Fire Department. Thank you for your service, Doug. And Maureen is right there in Phoenix, Arizona, one of our lovities. She works for the hospital system there. She's one of our big fans of our show. Maureen, you did your research. Yes, you saw our promotional postings about Doug. And of course, he's with the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Foundation, which excites me working in television, of course. And you guys probably checked out uh, the Emmys last night. Uh, you shared this on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for doing that, Alessandra. We appreciate that. That is really nice. Kathleen Walker is here. That means the New York Mets are not home playing at City Field, my team, the Mets. Uh, because she's here. Otherwise, she'd be there because she works for the New York Mets. Good to see you, Kathleen. Uh, hi, Jim. Hi, all. Hope all is well. Happy to be here this week. Fantastic. You picked a good week. Uh, Alessandra says to uh, Doug, welcome to Lovely Hall. We appreciate that. And um, boy, we've been getting so many email. I got about 150 emails that I have to return. Uh, it's been very busy. Guests that want to come on the show and just so much more. Early birthday greetings. Hi, Jim from Sherry. Merlin, who's watching in Ontario, Canada, welcomes Doug to the show as well. We thank you for that, Merlin, there in Canada. And uh, good stuff. You guys are great. Maureen says, uh, greetings to all my lovely family. Happy Monday, Maureen in Arizona there. Uh, Alessandra says, good evening, Jim. Good evening to you in North Carolina. Merlin in Canada and Ontario. Good evening, Jim and all lovelies. Jane watching in Sweden. Hello, everyone. And Jim, we love when you're here as well. Jane, our faithful lovelies who are watching all the time. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. These are the diehard lot, the ones who are with us here uh, all the time. We appreciate that. And those who watch Later on, we appreciate it as well. As I mentioned, uh, coming to us from Phoenix, Arizona, Doug Mummert is going to be with us. And uh, if you are familiar with his incredible background, as I mentioned earlier to you, uh, he was born in Hollywood, California, and he attended uh, Phoenix College. That's right. And uh, he's had this illustrious career um, in the fire department and uh, even retired as chief. And of course, there we have the Emmy right there next to him uh, for uh, the National Television Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Now, he is born originally in Hollywood, California. He attended Phoenix College, Grand Canyon University, and Arizona State University. And following his service in the U.S. military, he joined the Phoenix, Arizona Fire Department, where he retired as chief in 2015. He was a founding member of the department's All Hazards Incident Management Team, an original member of the Federal Emergency Management uh, Agency, FEMA, Urban Search and Rescue Team uh, for Arizona as well, also served on the FEMA USAR National Incident Support Team as a public information officer, and has also served on the PIO for his department. He was a longtime host and producer of Phoenix Fire's weekly radio program, Valley Watch, which airs on several Arizona radio stations, including Bonneville Broadcasting, KTAR AM and FM, as well as KPKX FM, also a public safety and media PR advocate and advisor as well. Now, in addition to all of this, he's had incredible work uh, that he has an opportunity to uh, get involved in. His odyssey into production took off in the 90s when he appeared in episodes of On Scene Emergency Response 
in the film No Code of Conduct, and in the documentary on the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500 produced by Surface TV. He also served as a technical advisor on the program America's Most Wanted. And about this time, he started a production communications business in his spare time, and some of his clients have included General Motors, the U.S. Army, Kraft Foods, Nike, and many well-known TV and film production companies. And in 94, he moved into the realm of producing, writing, directing, shooting, and editing. And it all began with creating safety and training videos for the Phoenix Depart Fire Department. We're going to leave it there and then have Doug pick up uh, where he left off from there. But in 2001, he was proud to be elected to the Board of Governors for the Rocky Mountain Southwest chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. And he certainly he, uh, currently serves as the chapter president and the national trustee. He's also honored to be the chairman of the nonprofit National Association of uh, National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Foundation and the president of the Rocky Mountain Emmy Foundation as well. Just to name a few of the things that he has been involved in over the years. It's my pleasure to welcome Doug again, live and direct from Phoenix, Arizona to the Jim Master Show Live. Everybody watching, we hope you'll welcome Doug to the show as well. It's a pleasure to have him here again from beautiful Phoenix. Doug, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Jim. It's great to be here, and it's uh, great to see and hear from all of your uh, viewers and listeners. So uh, I really appreciate the support from you and your audience and uh, for all the great work that the Academy Foundation is doing. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. And yes, uh, they're watching from all around the world. They're commenting. They're welcoming you, which I think is really, really fantastic. Uh, Maureen is in Arizona there, and she goes, Hi, Doug. Welcome to the Lovety family from the Chandler Lovety and fellow GCU graduate. I'm excited to hear your story this evening. And uh, hashtag is it Go Lopes? Yes, it's the uh, Grand Canyon University Antelope. So, so uh, that's a kind of a animal that represents part of Arizona. You know, it's a very diverse uh, state from all the way up to the Grand Canyon down to the desert. So uh, we've got a lot yeah. of uh, great schools here. And GCU is close to my heart. Now, uh, when did you, you were born in Hollywood in Tinseltown. Um, when did you make the move to Arizona? Well, like many uh, people that were probably in the same situation I was, I was a, a youngster and uh, we loaded up the car and moved from Beverly, if you will, and uh, came to Arizona. My was uh, a sheriff's deputy. He was in the public safety business as well. And he was a sheriff's deputy for uh, Los Angeles County. And he got a job with the state of Arizona in law enforcement. And so we uh, moved on out here, and one thing led to another, and I'm still here. You're still here, yes. And you've had this illustrious and uh, rewarding career in the fire department. Uh, what was the very first uh, inkling of interest, inspiration for you, Doug, to want to enter into the fire services? And thanks for your service. I mean, I know you're dedicated, uh, retired now, but dedicated to, uh, to it many many years so it all kind of started when i was getting ready to get out of high school i went to camelback high school here in phoenix it's a well-known school uh the name of that team is the spartans so uh, i was a spartan back then and when i was getting out of school i really wasn't 100 percent sure what direction i wanted to go you know after 12 years of school plus kindergarten uh, I was looking for something to do, but knew I wanted to continue my education. And it was in the Vietnam era, and I, they had the GI Bill at the time. Mm -hmm. And the GI Bill would afford you a great education uh, if you wanted to pursue that. So that was my main reason for uh, really looking hard at the military. And when I went in the military, there's a battery of tests you have to take. And uh, I'm a good test taker, fortunately for me. I don't know if I'm a good studier, but I'm a good test taker. And so uh, I had really good test scores and I could have basically any uh, position that didn't require you to be a, a 
college graduate because I was only 17, so I wasn't a genius or a college graduate yet. So that didn't really uh, uh, fit right right at that time. And uh, so I decided uh, against a career in the military and computer science, even though it was kind of uh, on the precipice of becoming really big, I always joke around like, you know, my life could have been completely different if I was a, uh, a Steve Jobs or a Bill Gates or yeah. know, these type of individuals building things in their garage. But uh, You'd be living in the, Palo uh, Alto right now. <laughs> right, right. It'd, be little, it'd be a little cooler. It's about a about 99 degrees here. It's probably quite yeah. a bit cooler in Palo Alto or Cupertino. Yeah. But, um, I, I got in a fire service through the military, and I spent four years in the Air Force. And uh, when I got out, I never had a day off. I just went right over to the Phoenix Fire Department. Fortunately, they like to hire veterans and uh, it worked to my benefit and like you said earlier 36 years later I retired from the fire department. How did you get involved? I mentioned a little bit in the introduction about some of the entree into the world of production and media, broadcast, television, video production. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of those early entrees into the world of production and how that progressed your interest and your passion for it really became deeply rooted. Well, I had, it was a kind of multifaceted part of it was timing and part of it was just being at the right place at the right time. Um, I had a really good friend who was in the craft services business. And for your listeners that don't know about craft yeah. services, I know you do. It's everybody's favorite, everybody's favorite <laughs> place on a, on a television movie set, right? That's where they have all the, the food and beverages and the, the goodies and all the stuff that supports the crew and the cast and things like that. So uh, I had a good friend that was in the craft services business and they kind of got me involved with uh, communications, the communications part of production. Back then, cell phones were kind of in their infancy People were using fax machines, and you know, it was a different yeah. time. Not everybody was carrying a, a big computer around their pocket uh, like they are today. So uh, that's how I kind of got my feet wet. And then it just so happened that uh, I got injured on a call at the fire department, and I had to uh, go on what we call light duty or alternate duty for a little over a month. And uh, while I was doing that, you know, they don't just let you lay around uh, at home and uh, watch Andy Griffith or anything like that. <laughs> uh, they put it in, it's a great show. As a, yeah. Um, Mayberry. Don yeah, Knotts. Yeah, or, 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 <laughs> yeah, or Happy Days. I saw you, you're going to have Don most. And, uh, so Wednesday, you yeah. Lay around Wednesday. and watch TV all, all day. <laughs> but uh, so I was working in the safety section and the chief of the safety section said, hey, Doug, I know you got a little bit of experience experience with uh, television production. Uh, do you think you could put together some kind of a video, a safety video that we could show the troops, if you will? And uh, like I said before, one thing led to another. I produced the safety video. It, it got, you know, it was uh, well received along with, uh, I wouldn't I produced it. Of course, there was a lot of uh, firefighters that helped me and also uh, some professionals that we have working for the fire department. That, that was their business. So I just kind of took the ball and ran with it. And then uh, that kind of got my foot in the door on the fire department side of things. And then it wasn't, it was within a year. Uh, they called me and asked me if I'd take over for video production for the fire department. So that's what I did. And then from there, how did you get involved with the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. I mean, of course, that's a beloved organization. And the the Emmys were, the 73rd Primetime Emmys were just last night on CBS. Congratulations to all the winners. How did the that entree uh, into the world of uh, the Academy and the fabulous foundation that provides all these wonderful scholarships for people that are wanting to enter this line of work, how did that opportunity come your way, Doug? Well, 
I hate to keep using the same phrases over and over. It's a long story, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to chop it down and make it short. The part where <laughs> I got involved with the academy wasn't, wasn't too it wasn't too long. Um, I actually got a call from the regional academy here, the uh, Rocky Mountain West region, and they were uh, tasked to assist with judging the uh, national um, public affairs programming and community service programming that was uh, up for Emmys that year. This was right around uh, the early 2000s. And uh, so I went down to the NBC Elliot and we judged uh, entries for that year. And uh, it went well. I enjoyed it. Uh, I was, they thought I was a good fit to be a judge for that because I was working in affairs and public affairs. And so it wasn't too long after that, they contacted me again and they said, well, what do you think about running for our board? And uh, the Rocky Mountain Southwest region covers Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and uh, western part of California, pardon me, the eastern part of California, as far as the bus up against Arizona. So um, I was shocked that I got elected to the board because I'm definitely uh, 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 a round peg in a square hole, if you will. You know, uh, there's not <laughs> firefighters that are working on, on the board for the uh, academy. And uh, then just one thing led to another. Each There are 19 of the regional chapters uh, that make the, that are part of the uh, National Academy. And so we're going to have to talk a little bit about structure so we can talk about the primetime Emmys last night. So yes. the Academy yeah. itself, it started many years ago. Um, and it started actually in New York City because back then, other than some silent films and some things of that nature and some films that were being done, uh, which is the uh, Motion Picture Academy, um, the production was all for television, was all being done on the East Coast of New York. And then uh, as Hollywood became more and more uh, involved in television production, um, basically, they basically split from the New York Academy. And so we had two academies. We had, and their sister organization, you have the uh, National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, which is in New York City. And then you have the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, which is in Los Angeles. And then we also have the International Academy, which is, you might imagine, international. And those are the three organizations that are authorized and licensed to uh, uh, award the prestigious Emmy Award that we all saw last night on the 73rd Annual Primetime Emmy Award. Now, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences in Los Angeles, they uh, run the entire uh, Primetime Emmy process in that contest and they award the Primetime Emmy. And, and then the National Academy in New York, we deal with the Daytime Emmys, the sports Emmys, the mm -hmm. news and documentary Emmys, and the technology and engineering Emmys. So, and then the International Emmy Awards deals with the International Emmy Awards. So it's a, and then we have also those 19 chapters of which the Rocky Mountain Southwest is one. We have 19 other chapters besides Los Angeles. Uh, we have 19 others that cover the rest of the country and uh, including all 50 states some of the territories, and um, that's how we uh, administer the Emmy Awards. And if, if, if it's a, a regional program, then it would be in one of the, uh, through one of the regional academy chapters. And if it's a national program that's aired all over the country, then it goes to the National Academy or the uh, Television Academy in Los Angeles, depending on what type of program it is, whether it's prime time, doc, game shows, children's programming, you name it. So, mm. like I said, it is kind of a long discussion, but uh, it's an important delineation. And uh, yes. all, the, uh, all the organizations are uh, sister organizations and do uh, administer the Emmy Award. 
Now, the foundation, which I think is really a beautiful thing uh, that the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences has, that you are the chairman and president of, awards these incredible scholarships for those who are pursuing uh, careers within the industry, right? And, and the awards, the amount of money that's been awarded has been extraordinary and it really gives people a leg up on the career um tell us a little bit about that the foundation itself people might you know they know everything about the emmys they just see the emmy award presentations and, and people talk about when they've won an emmy and they think of just the emmy portion of it whether it's local regional national international but there is this foundational part that really helps and supports the arts in the industry and fosters learning and education and it's really a quite a thing that you are heading up so all those things you just mentioned are part of the main focus of the academy you know we're uh, besides obviously um, awarding emmy awards to excellence in broadcasting and television um, we also want to support and help generation of television professionals. So we every year uh, are giving out scholarships and we also have programs to support young people that are coming up through the ranks because when we're uh, out of the business and uh, you know enjoying our golden years, we want these young professionals to have a leg up and a hand up to uh, get to the level where we are, and uh, that's what we're here for. So um, through the generosity of Academy members and the general public, and uh, many professionals in the industry, we have been able to uh, raise money for these scholarships. And uh, I'll go over them briefly when you're ready, but uh, this year we were able to give out $100,000 in national scholarships. And then our 19 chapters also have scholarships. And so does the uh, Academy in Los Angeles. So there's a lot of scholarships that are available and some of them are aimed at specific uh, focused areas and some are open to anybody who qualifies. And we have a process, it's a juried process that we, uh, there's a selection process and that process begins in the spring and it will be on our website. I want to get a few plugs in for that website. It's the emmy.tv and you can go on there and you can either look up under the foundation or you can look up directly under scholarships. And you can see not only all the scholarships we've been uh, producing and handing out to up and coming creative minds and students, but you can also see the schedule and how you can get involved if you're a a high school senior or a uh, certain uh, college students that are already in college. So we will talk about all those when you're ready to hear about them. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about it because I think it's fascinating and people are they're commenting about it as well. Um, uh, Toby's actually asking, she's in California. She says, does Doug know A. Bone Martinez? He was hoping to be the chairman of SAG. I don't know them personally, but uh, of course, uh, many of our uh, cast members that are members of the Academy are members of the Screen Actors Guild. So, right. Uh, love, to, love to meet uh, them and uh, may do so at one of the Emmy shows going forward. Um, you know, with the COVID-19 and all the fun we've been having uh, dodging that yeah. kind of uh, made it a little rough to get together, but uh, we're we're doing it virtually today, so things will turn around. Absolutely. So tell us more. Like you were saying, you can sort of break it out as far as how it works uh, for us. I think it's quite exciting, and people are uh, enjoying the conversation. Although Linda in Florida said you do have a beautiful view out your window behind you. <laughs> The view behind me is actually uh, from my house, and uh, it's a nice view of Phoenix. It's 
looks a little hazy or smoggy down there today. It's much like uh, speaking of Los Angeles, it's a valley and it's a totally ringed in mountains. So once you get the pollution in there, unless you get a nice breeze or something, it's hard to get it out. And then the, the warm air sometimes, uh, you know, traps the, the pollution in there too. But uh, it's a little hazy back there, but uh, a nice day overall for us. Absolutely. Now, uh, the foundation of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences has awarded $100,000 in scholarships to eight college-bound high school students pursuing careers in television. Uh, that was just announced back in July. That is fantastic, Doug. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about those. Uh, these were all made possible by generous donors and supporters and people just like your viewers. You know, some people go right on our website and donate that way. We're a 501c3 tax exempt organization. So donations are 100% tax deductible. And you know, there's another neat way. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it, but I thought I'd mention it today. Amazon has a program, it's called the Amazon Smile program, and you can go right on, I believe the website, uh, amazon.smile.com, uh, you can, or amazonsmile.com, if you put that in there, you'll find it, and you go right in there and you can pick, Amazon will make a donation on your behalf for every purchase you make, it's a, it's a very small amount, and uh, it's like, 0.01% or something pennies on the dollar, but you know what? They're they're putting their money back into the community. It doesn't cost the uh, Amazon user anything, and it's a great program. And uh, of course, we'd love to uh, receive money from you that way. But if you've got another favorite charity, hey, I'll give Amazon Smile a plug, and uh, you can check it out. And all the uh, approved charities are on that list. You just enter their name in a search. And uh, you can find it. Ours is either under NADIS, because that's our uh, acronym. You know, our name is a long one. You know, if you go to introduce somebody, you go, yeah, yeah. I'm for the National Academy. So, Academy of Television Arts so, and Sciences you, Foundation Chairman and President right, if Doug Murmert. <laughs> right. If you're, uh, if you're in the business, then everybody knows what NADIS is. And you can just NADIS. Say, yeah, right. NADIS. And uh, so... You know, that's another way people can donate if they'd like to support what we're doing. But let's talk about some of the uh, scholarships and uh, some of the great things that are going on. Uh, yeah, yeah, this year's pool of ad ad applicants, I heard, really far exceeded the selection committee's expectations too, right? Well, you know, every year you think that uh, people can't get better, and they do. It's amazing because... Not only are the younger folks that are in that demographic, are they, uh, you know, that when they were born, they were born with the, in the computer age, if you will. And even yes. uh, some of them in the uh, smartphone age, you know, the smartphones have only been around for about 11 years. So, I mean, people are shooting and editing things on their phone and then they're on their phones now. Uh, right. And uh, yeah. I'm talking to you on my phone right now, so uh, it's not you're on your phone. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad technology, right? Some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years ago, you used to have the big satellite truck and a whole crew to get a signal like this. But we still do have to use some of those for the uh, yes. really high end productions. But you're right. Now, when you're yeah. watching your local news, they'll be running that thing off of a cell phone, and uh, yeah, the bandwidth is amazing. The yeah, and the 5G, unbelievable. But you'll need, yeah, oh, the big satellite technology, things of that nature for uh, major sporting events, the Olympics, international events, definitely. And some of the cell phones now, they're getting ready to come out with the technology where you'll be able to talk off of satellite in, as opposed to, so I'm at the bottom of, in my backyard, the Grand Canyon. Guess what? There's no cell phone towers down the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So if That's you don't right. have a cell phone or pardon me, a satellite connection, you're not going to make a call. 
Right. But the new technology will enable you to choose if you want to make a satellite call from your cell phone. So look for that. It's a, right around the corner. Right around the corner. Breaking news heard exclusively from Doug on the Gym Master Show Live. You heard it here first. Breaking news. <laughs> well, that was one of the things on my resume that we talked about was the public safety. Uh, yes. So I, I do keep my hand in it uh, a lot. I did want to mention, because, too, before uh, we get over the categories, that you were the past um, present member of the Arizona Production Association, International Television Association, ITVA as we know it, National Information Officers Association, Public Relations Society of America, International Association of Firefighters, and the International Association of Fire Chiefs. Very busy man over the years. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, I want to talk now, though, about some of our other talented uh, people that I've had the pleasure of meeting some of them, and uh, we will be seeing them. You'll be seeing some of these folks. I just lost one of my earpieces. Can you still hear me? Yep, we hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> yep, I'm down to one now. You know, when the wireless earbud falls out, then you know. I'm down to one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about some of these great recipients and the great donors. Um, you know, the first one I want to talk about is the Jim McKay Scholarship. I don't know if, uh, uh, yeah. if some of your listeners remember Jim McKay. He was a longtime sportscaster on shows like The Wide World of Sports. ABC, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the various networks and uh, the various networks have gotten together and created a scholarship in Jim's name. He passed away, unfortunately, a while back. And, uh, one of my favorites, a uh, real class act. I always loved his delivery. Just one of the best, one of the veterans in the industry. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, they created a $10,000 scholarship in his name. And that was awarded this year to Jack William Smith in uh, San Jose, California. So uh, we're proud of uh, Jack and he will uh, receive that scholarship at the next Sports Emmy Awards. So look for him on uh, on that program, and uh, I'll be uh, excited to meet him in the future. And then another uh, similar scholarship is for Mike Wallace, another great journalist. And sixty uh, minutes, yes, yeah, CBS. Yep. yep, and uh, that's available to any high school senior going into uh, secondary education college or university level pursuing a uh, career in journalism and that's for ten thousand dollars also and, and that went to hunter walterman and he's from silver springs maryland so another uh, great future uh, television talent and uh, we're really excited about that and then uh, believe it or not i'm just going down the list in no, no particular order but uh, I have a scholarship in my own name, and it is uh, named for somebody who's uh, going for a career in television and education in television, but they're somebody that have shown a, uh, a real panache or a real passion for community service, because that's kind of my thing. I love community service. I love giving back. So uh, if somebody's got a great background doing something in service for their community, then they're eligible for that $10,000 scholarship. And that scholarship this year went to Tyler Michael Harding, and he's from Commerce, Michigan. So uh, really proud of him. Congratulations to him, sure. Uh, and then uh, the next one we, we have is the Univision uh, scholarship and it's ten thousand dollars, and it is uh, awarded to any Hispanic or Latino student that's pursuing a career in education and television. So we do have some of these that are targeted at specific groups to give them a leg up on the uh, whole process, and uh, they're just awesome scholarships. So uh, the next one is the NAS. There we go with the acronym, the NADIS Inclusion Scholarship. 
And that's one of our newer ones. And it is awarded to a student pursuing a career in any aspect of the television industry who identifies as black, indigenous, or a person of color. And that scholarship uh, this year went to Kun Wu Kim in Hanoi. So uh, I've seen the work done there, and it is awesome. And I, I forgot to uh, mention that the Univision scholarship recipient was Malia Holler of Santa Barbara, California. So that is in cop up there. I was a bit rid of her. <laughs> All right, so we have a few more to go over, and then we're going to talk about a new program that we have through uh, Coca Cola. That's that exciting. Announced the sports um, We have the Elizabeth Stanton Women in Television $10,000 scholarship awarded to a woman pursuing a career in any aspect of the television industry. And that was awarded to Samantha Lewandowski, and she's from Springdale, Arkansas. So we really do fan out and reach the whole country with these scholarships. And, uh, yeah. These, these kids, they're, they're really bright. They're really uh, quick to learn. And uh, what's really awesome is not only is the technology been maturing, but so has the, you know, remember when it was like a new thing when they'd have magnet high schools and things like that? Well, now yes. many of the high schools have uh, television and film production, and journalism, and things like that. And it really, uh, these kids really get a head start on things because you just have to get in a college program to uh, learn new skills. And uh, right here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, behind me, we have the Arizona State University Walter Cronkite School of Journalism well known it's named for uh, mr cronkite who unfortunately passed away not too long ago and uh, they uh, graduate a lot of great uh, kids or young folks every year and uh, they're out there working in your backyard mm. that's incredible so, <laughs> let's see I, there's a another one i wanted to talk about and that is the I've got so many scholarships, I got to keep up with all of them. We have it's the amazing. E scholarship, which is from the Academy's trustees, and it's named for Linda Giankini. <coughs> Excuse me. And she was a longtime chair of our awards committee, and they're the ones that basically uh, work through the whole awards process in all of our Emmy categories shows and they keep the, the playing field level and as you might imagine you have to have some pretty uh, straightforward rules to uh, maintain the yeah. and the uh, importance of the Emmy Award and what, what it represents and the, and the credibility and yes yeah that and all of them. yep so uh, Linda passed away unfortunately so we named the scholarship mm -hmm. for her the last two years that's a twenty thousand dollar scholarship and uh, it's uh, it's awarded uh, directly by the trustees and then uh, through our scholarship uh, uh, committee so uh, the last one I think I want to talk about is the McKinsey family scholarship and it's a twenty thousand dollar scholarship I thought I'd save these bigger ones till the end, but uh, David McKenzie is a uh, longtime television producer. If you want to see an industry professional that's done just a ton of great work in the television industry, uh, uh, he's out of California, but uh, his whole family is involved in the scholarship and uh, their generosity is just amazing. And they, just want to pay it forward and uh, just like Natus, he's been a member of Natus and I believe the uh, Addis as well, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences in Los Angeles and uh, he and his family uh, really step up and uh, make a huge donation every year to these scholarships. So we couldn't do any of this without our generous donors and uh, we're so proud of them and uh, uh, like to show them our gratitude whenever and however we can. Absolutely right. So, uh, 
So this really gives yeah. them a leg oh, wow. up. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to have this scholarship available to those that want to pursue, you know, um, this this incredible, uh, demanding, unpredictable, sometimes crazy, nutty, but beautiful and rewarding industry that we're all in. Um, it, it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. Um, and there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of interest by those who want to, you know, bid for these scholarships, huh? And those who want to help donate to make those funds available. Yes, it's, uh, you know, when you see uh, a great person, a great journalist that are really uh, doing good work, you know, we all recognize that as human beings when we see people that are uh, really delivering on all and firing on all cylinders. Uh, it really makes you proud. And uh, if we can just do a little bit to help them, you know, get that leg up and put their best foot forward. Uh, it really makes me proud that uh, we get amazing letters and uh, calls and different things from the scholarship recipients. As a matter of fact, I have a great success story before we talk about our last uh, and latest effort that we're working on. But uh, uh, we have this great success story right in the academy. And it's the uh, our president, the CEO of the academy. He was one of our uh, scholarship recipients many years ago. I don't remember the exact year, but over 20 years ago. And uh, he was a uh, high school senior going to college. He got a, uh, he, he, I believe it was the trustee scholarship. And he went on to uh, do a lot of uh, different great things. He worked for uh, some of the television networks. He worked in the U.S. Senate for uh, one or two of the senators. He uh, worked for Twitter. He was uh, in charge of uh, politics and the political arm of Twitter. And uh, now he's uh, proud to say that uh, we uh, stole him away, if you will. And he's the president and CEO of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. And his name is Adam Sharp. So uh, <laughs> if any of you uh, listeners and viewers want to google adam sharp no e on the end just sharp like sharp man uh you can read all about how he came up through the uh whole scholarship process and uh you know not only is it giving somebody a little financial boost who may most likely need it uh it's making those connections and he he made a connection with some of the trustees that awarded the scholarship and uh, you know some of them told him hey if you ever need anything give us a call and he found himself doing some intern work at one of the stations where that person worked and uh, they took him under his wing and you know here we are today and he's the president and ceo of the academy so that's a great story i love it. that really is um, internships are so invaluable too. My internship when I was uh, studying the industry in college in New York was with um, the launch of News 12 when they were launching News 12 and they have a lot of those regional News 12s. Uh, I know in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut tri-state area, but there's other locations I believe for News 12, which was under the auspices of Cablevision Systems at the time. Um, and they were also launching, we had an opportunity to work. I was working in the um, promotion department, writing press releases for the Long Island Sports Network. The cable system had done a, a joint venture with the local public television station, and they were broadcasting high school sports and college sports across the New York area on the cable system and on the public television station, they were sort of simulcasting. So I was in the promotion department writing the press releases, the promos, things of that nature. So we were doing it for the sports network, we were doing it for the um, launch of News 12, and then also uh, AMC, which was, people now just say AMC, because everything is sort of abbreviated, but it was American Movie Classics. 
um, which was um, beginning at that time too. So invaluable just being there inside the television studio working with everybody and even having an opportunity to uh, see other departments and how they link and how they work together. I was always, we've talked about this with some of the guests uh, who've come through the gym master show live, the understanding and ability of learning as much as you can about a lot of different areas, because there's so many opportunities and so many things you can do within these industries that if, you, if you're just going for writing or just going for videography or for talent or producing or whatever it may be, it's good to at least know your know, editing to it's good to at least have an idea and appreciation for what everybody is doing in that building in that facility, uh, the sales department, the promotion people, because it's all tied together. And sometimes you never know. And it's happened to me multiple times where I've been called upon Jim, just run out there. The other guy is sick. The other person didn't show up. The other person is not here. We please just run out there and say something, run out there and do something, make magic. Um, so as much as you can learn and as much as you can foster as far as not only gathering the education and information, but also the understanding and appreciation that every area and every department and every person, if you're on a movie set, same thing, the grip, the makeup artist, the lighting person, all invaluable as much as the top tier talent because we need each other to make this whole thing happen. So I was always trained to be our professors and even hands-on and internships and everybody said, learn as much as you can about everything because you never know you're going to be called upon to help out with this or have an opportunity in this area. And it's all part of, you know, pieces of the major puzzle. You're, you're one piece of a major puzzle and appreciate all of that. So I've come from that sort of training and that mindset um, to appreciate, respect, and have uh, understanding of at least what everybody is doing. I might not be a master of that. He might be, but if I need to pitch in and help him out, I can. Um, and I think that's, that's a good way to do it. You're another, uh, you're another success case, uh, just like the ones that we're trying to put forward. And, uh, you've got the, the same great stories that, that we're looking for and trying to create more of those great stories. But you're right. If you can, uh, if you can, uh, mentor a young person and, uh, give them some, uh, professional or student development, uh, we're, we're really into that at the academy and the foundation. One of our one of our main goals and objectives. So, so I want to talk about one more uh, thing that we're excited to announce this year, and we announced it on the Sports Emmy Awards this year. We are uh, working with Coca Cola on a uh, grant program, and this is actually aimed at uh, college and university students from historically black colleges and universities. And uh, it's a little bit different than our typical scholarship program. Um, there's information about it on our website. People can go on there and they can, uh, they can sign up, a, put in an interest card for any of our scholarships or specifically the HBCU program as we call it, because that's another uh, very long uh, name. So of course it has an acronym as well. Uh, being being in the military and the fire department world, I was a uh, pro at acronyms. You know, we didn't really like to uh, use them when we were talking to uh, the the public and the the mainstream. You know, because there's nothing worse than people dropping the acronyms on you. I'm like what? You're right, You're right. So uh, the HBCU, the historically black colleges and universities, there's over a hundred of them. I think it's 107. And they've been around for over 200 years. And uh, we're looking for students in there. And they're going to submit uh, through our essay and uh, video uh, selection process. They're going to submit uh, information about projects they're working on. And then our uh, 
our student production awards, which is another thing we haven't even talked about yet. Our student production award judges will uh, work with our scholarship committee, and those will be judged. And then we're going to give, uh, I believe, it's fifty thousand dollars a year to that program in the form of grants to support the great work that these folks are doing. So uh, we're really excited about that, and uh, this coming process right after the first of the year will be the, uh, the first uh, chance we have to go through that process. So it's a really uh, big deal. And, uh, we're really looking forward to that. That's so exciting. I did the student production award. Yeah. And the student production award, uh, that's uh, on the national level, that's for high school students, and students can uh, enter that contest. It's on our website also uh, under uh, at the emmys.tv, and you can go there and learn all about the student production award. But uh, basically, high school students submit their work. They can come from anywhere in the country, and uh, that that work will be judged, and there will be nominations, and there will be uh, uh, student production awards given out. And uh, you know, not only is it a great experience, but this, it just recognizes the great work that these students are already doing, and it, it gives us a way to uh, not only highlight them but support them. And uh, you know, usually we would be doing it in person. Hopefully, the next one will be in person. But the last couple have been uh, totally virtual. And then on the regional level, we also have student production awards. And uh, they're typically for high school and college entries. So uh, if you go to our website, the emmys.tv, you can also look on there. And there's a link to all of the things that we've been talking about, whether it's student production or scholarship. Uh, so this is it here, www.theemmys.tv. That's it. A picture is worth a million words in this case, so I'll just stop right there. You've got it. Your viewers can see it there. Write that down. Go there, and uh, you can learn all about what are, all the good stuff we've been talking about today. And Jim, we really appreciate you helping us get the word out. I know you uh, work with our uh, friend Harlan Bohr to uh, do some great work on uh, great things in the. Uh, in the entertainment industry, and uh, we really think that the work the foundation is doing is uh, stand-up work. And, uh, really what do you see as the uh, the future? Uh, obviously, um, you know, technology has changed the game a lot too. Um, even in the broadcasting industry, as we have seen, you know, as trained broadcasters, television. Uh, newspapers, radio, a lot of it, there's been a lot of swift changes, digital media, even what we're doing here. You know, I work in television and radio in the day, and here we are online with this show at night. This whole world is a whole new thing that's come in. Uh, one of the things that I have always said is it's very smart to have your feet in both uh, if you're a traditional, you know, broadcast person, don't limit yourself to just stay in that world. Adapt to welcome and appreciate these digital opportunities and expansions. Uh, but that has, you know, brought in a whole new way of thinking and a way of doing things too. Now with COVID, a lot of people have been doing things from home or remotely. Tell us about the future of it all and uh, how some of these technologies have changed the game a little bit too. I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the technologies like the technology that I'm using right now to speak to you and your audience, it's technology that's been out there and it really kind of went from the frying pan into the fire, if you will. And uh, it's Maybe it wasn't quite ready for prime time, but it worked yeah. when we <laughs> used it, you know. And uh, I I love all the uh, the Zoom fails, if you will, or you know, where the people get out of their chair and they're uh, in their pajamas or whatever, you know. People are so used to wearing uh, the all the time, but uh, I 
Yeah, you you only see from here up these days. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> so the technology, you know, is really uh, changed the game a lot. Maybe you can uh, take down the two shot while I fix it. Are you having an audio thing? Okay, so we'll. I like, like the way you said that. That was a technical term. See, this is a two shot. We can show you a few things. A two shot is me, and then he is there. A single would be this. That's a single shot. So it's single. It's only on the one person. The two shot is when you have the two. <laughs> so he's fixing something. Uh, his audio went down a little bit. So he's fixing something. Let's check in some of these uh, lovely comments coming in from our viewers. Good to see everybody. Jim Masters here. We're chatting with Doug Mummert. He is the uh, chairman and he is also the president of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Foundation. And he's coming to us live from Phoenix, Arizona. Lisa Rodrigo says, hi all. Was late for the party, but glad to be here. Welcoming Doug as well. Toby in Encino, California says, we used to get the Chronicle thrown on our driveways back in the days in the San Fernando Valley, as well as the Green Sheet, a.k.a. Daily News. That's really, really cool. Good stuff. Yes, they would always throw things at the end of the uh, driveway. I think they still do on days when it's raining, too. <laughs> Kathleen is here and she says she's enjoying the conversation as well. Doug will be back in just a second. He's uh, getting some things set up there. There's that beautiful location where he is in uh, Phoenix. He, uh, the Wi-Fi isn't the best where he is. Uh, we're blessed with our Wi-Fi here. But uh, let's check in with some of these comments as you guys are uh, chatting away here. Uh, Linda says, thank you, Doug, for coming on Jim's Lovety Show and sharing all the good work you do for upcoming students and their careers. Yes, we're talking about the scholarships that the uh, foundation provides to those who want to go into careers uh, in television and other areas, and it's really, really incredible. The website is theemmys.tv if you want to check it out. Um, we were talking about some of my career, uh, my internships in college in New York, uh, we're with um, News 12, AMC, American Movie Classics, uh, LISN, the Long Island Sports Network, and some other uh, channels, I think Bravo and some of the others, when they were uh, putting those together uh, in New York. And uh, back in college, you know, when you're in college, it's really good to get involved in a lot of clubs and organizations. For me, I was a feature writer for the um, school newspaper. Uh, one of my best friends uh, in school and um, my roommate, do dorm mate, uh, was the uh, sports editor for the school newspaper at the college. I also worked for the, uh, the radio stations and the television stations and was, um, let's say, so many different organizations. I was very busy on campus with a lot of different organizations. And I think it's really important to, to hone the skills uh, as best as you can. Internships are always great. Internships are golden. You know, they give you the practical experience of being in whatever the environment environment is, not just in this industry, but in any industry. Internships are always great. So if the school offers that opportunity, grab it. Uh, and also, in addition to being a part of the radio station in college and the university, uh, the TV uh, studio, and uh, also I was part of the um, I was the president, actually, of the university's debate team, um, and that was our uh, forensic society and debate team. So we would compete against other colleges, and we would do debating back and forth, and we'd have to prepare and create uh, extemporaneous speeches, impromptu speeches, persuasive speeches, and so much more. And that was terrific experience. Um, to be able to speak, you know, in an ad lib way, fill in the blanks when you need to, like I'm doing right now, <laughs> pull from a lot of different areas and keep it flowing. So yeah, I was uh, president of the Long Island University debate team in New York, 
when I was uh, at university and it was terrific experience, really was terrific experience. And um, treasurer of a couple of other clubs, so very involved in the school and uh, in activities, which is another thing to do as well. The scholarship that Doug's talking about is really, really extraordinary. And uh, we're gonna welcome him back now. The lighting too, as the sun is setting where he is in Phoenix, the lighting is coming nicer and nicer on his, uh, his face. Uh, there's also a little, just a little bit of a delay. So if you, if you see a pause, hear a pause after I say something and Doug pauses, the uh, audio is coming to him a little bit delayed on his end. So he's just waiting to hear the full sentences, which makes sense. Make sure you do that too in life. Listen to the full sentences before you jump. <laughs> That's very important when you're having conversations. He's waiting for the full sentence to transmit and then answering from there. And he's back. He probably powdered his nose working in this industry. <laughs> Makeup. He's back. Look at him. He did powder his nose. He's got a tan and everything. <laughs> All right, Jim. Well, sorry. Welcome for, back. Um, we were just talking about technology when my... Uh, when, isn't that how... <laughs> earbuds, so... Uh, It'll make or break you. It'll put egg on your face as often as it can. <laughs> why we are talking about crew members, uh, not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera are so important. So, uh, yes, small. So the, so going forward with the foundation, some of the exciting plans, the things that you see in the future and, and how has, you know, the adaptation and, uh, understanding and appreciation of digital and, and technology changes that have changed so swiftly, uh, added into some of the work of the foundation. Well, um, the foundation remains committed to, uh, you know, seeing after and helping our uh, next generation of professionals and students. But, uh, you know, from the academy's uh, angle, we see, you know, just you see it every day. We all see it every day, the explosion of technology. And we were talking right before the uh, little unscheduled break there, uh, <laughs> talking about uh you know, whether or not all of it's ready for prime time, if you will, speaking of the prime time Emmys last night. But um, uh, I, I'm, I, for one, do have Zoom fatigue. We're not talking on Zoom. No, no. A nice little plug for Zoom. But, uh, you know, it, it, it serves a purpose and it works. And uh, we don't often see a lot of Emmy-worthy uh, productions that are shot on Zoom. And it's not because the content is maybe it maybe it is emmy worthy content and the subject matter is great but it's usually uh, the production values if you will because not everybody knows how to get at least some kind of a decent uh, shot and audio from their home or office or wherever they might be but uh, the technology is driving a lot of what we do on the regional level so now uh, content that is you know the word television is on our name, but in reality, how much content are people ingesting on their televisions? Most people are ingesting it on some kind of a smaller screen, be it a, a computer, a laptop, a tablet, a phone, a watch, you know, whatever it might be. But uh, that's the kind of technology that we are working into our awards process and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, Spanish language and uh, all the uh, excellent programming that's being produced in Spanish language uh, that we are recognizing as well. And then uh, there's, uh, you know, in the old days when they said, I'm making a film, they meant that they were shooting it on film. And there are a lot of the movies still are shot on film, but many of them are shot digitally now. And in the old days, you could definitely tell when you were watching a video. Oh, yeah. I challenge yes. you now to know whether or not it's video or film because uh, it's really the same production techniques, although for film, it was a whole other uh, set of skills that you need to have on top of uh, those video production techniques, but uh, producing and directing and all that. And, you know, with the advent of nonlinear video production 
that's what opened it up to the, the, the young people in high school and colleges and all that because it, you know they talk about the cutting room floor well that doesn't exist anymore per se right right it's all, it's all done digital and on the film production now you know they're looking at the uh the playback immediately and uh, the audio uh quality is so good and the technology that they're using and they're using drones instead of helicopters and things like that so the technology is just, uh, and then the computer aided, uh, computer generated stuff. You know, during COVID, I'm sure your viewers and listeners have seen and heard that. That's where we went during COVID because we couldn't get it. You could, but you really had to work hard to get a bunch of talent and crew on a movie or television set, production set, uh, to produce content. But when you were using uh, your uh, computer generated and special effects and things of that nature and animation. It was a, a workaround on the uh, COVID issue. So I think you're going to see us getting back to hopefully very soon, more and more in-person productions. And yeah, but the, all the uh, computer generated stuff and the special effects is definitely here to stay. It really is. So it's good to, have knowledge and dip your feet into all the areas because uh, that way there it makes you, uh, well, it expands your understanding and appreciation of it all and gives you opportunities to create in all these different platforms and venues, but also you become even more valuable to that potential employer, uh, even if it's freelance, a gig or something full time, having as much understanding of uh, all the swift changes and everything that's going on while still appreciating and still maybe having your hands and feet, you know, in the traditional forms of media um, is a good thing. It's an advantage, right? That's right. And if, if you want to embrace anything, make sure you embrace change because it's coming and uh, you might as well embrace it or otherwise you're just not going to be very happy because it's, it's a, uh, the world is always changing and hopefully uh, mostly for the better. You know, um, obvious that you've lived your life and continue to um, in the service of others, in the military, uh, in the fire services, and doing this work as the chairman and president of the foundation for the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. You, you know what service uh, for the good of others is all about Doug. It's it's right there front and center. What is it about this um, work that you do and have done over the years that brings you great blessing and joy and inspires you? Because obviously you were placed on the planet in the service of others and you've done it in an exemplary way. Well, I appreciate you uh, recognizing me for that, but uh... I don't know. I think it's it starts generally, uh, you know, when you're uh, raised by your parents. Uh, like I said, my dad was in law enforcement. My mother was a businesswoman, and they were uh, great parents, and they instilled their uh, work and uh, personal beliefs and uh, work ethic into all of us. Uh, would I have uh, three sisters, and uh, all were were and are uh, immensely um, successful and uh, share my passion for uh, doing things for others. And I think it's just something that it gets into your blood and your uh, under your skin. And yeah, the, it's just a way of life and you, you don't even think about it. But, uh, you know, I don't know, it sounds kind of cliche and I don't want I don't want to come across that way. But uh, it just feels good to do things for the uh, people that uh, might need a hand up at times or uh, just uh, it, it, it just became clear to me when I especially when I got in the fire department business that uh, that was just my way of life and uh, didn't even think twice about it and just you know the lights come on the speakers come on and let's go help somebody so uh, that's it that's out there in the uh, public safety world today and I just uh, always like to recognize our uh, public safety for military for their service. And uh, yes. I want to thank you for uh, shining a light on the foundation today and the 
great work the Academy is doing to uh, uh, give a hand up to the next generation of uh, journalists and uh, television professionals. Absolutely. The pleasure is all mine, sir, really. And uh, really a terrific conversation. I think people learned a lot and have been inspired. And those watching, again, who want to learn more can go to the Emmys.tv, the Emmys dot tv to learn more about the incredible work of the foundation the opportunities for scholarships and so much more really terrific having you here uh doug i appreciate the time and wish you nothing but continued success with everything that you're doing and for the foundation uh you know i stamp of approval as a fellow you know broadcaster here i really love the uh, the fact that you know, you guys have been doing this for such a long time, but it does take, of course, a village. So also if folks are desirous of wanting to participate in terms of rolling up their sleeves or, or donating, is it the Emmys.tv for that as well? Definitely. You can get a hold of uh, me right through the uh, website uh, or you can contact me directly at dmummert, M-U-M-M-E-R-T, at the emmys.tv perfect doug uh go out and enjoy a little bit of that sunlight you have left there <laughs> and it was really a pleasure and i just want to show you since we have a live uh, audience and uh, like i said we do this show sort of johnny carson dick cavett style warm conversational freestyle and and i even though we're in this uh, world of online I do the show pretty much like a television show. And so we have interaction with viewers from around the world. Mary Bishop who's watching in Florida says, thanks for the wonderful conversation, Doug and Jim. You're welcome, Mary. Kathleen in New York City says, thank you for being with us tonight, Doug. Uh, Maureen in Arizona, right there in Phoenix, uh, works in the healthcare industry. She's a nurse right there. I have an enormous amount of respect for all of your good works. Thank you for everything you have done and will continue to do. That's from Maureen right there in Phoenix. And uh, thank you for your service and all the foundation does. Thank you for joining us tonight as well. And that's from Sherry Larson watching us in Kansas and Linda in uh, Florida, St. Augustine. Thank you for your service, Doug. We appreciate that as well. Um, good stuff. Good stuff from our viewers uh, watching around the world, uh, Doug. Thanks for the time. Uh, let's stay in touch. This is really great work that you're doing. I'm glad that we were able to uh, link up and bring you on as a special guest on the Gym Master Show Live. Love it if you uh, could spread the word about our show on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Uh, that would be awesome. Appreciate that. And uh, thanks for all you do. It was a pleasure having you on the show. And I hope the show met whatever expectations uh, you had and enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you, Doug. Thank you, Jim. It was great. We really appreciate it. And thank you to all your uh, loyal uh, love, love, love it is the love it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what happened last summer? Uh, we've done 485 or so episodes live seven days a week of this series. And like I said, it's not even the day job. I have the full-time day job in TV and radio. And I was saying the show has a lot of light, love, and levity, uh, especially during the pandemic. People, you know, really needed to hear some positive, inspiring messages. And I, and I enjoy doing that. So uh, I said love and levity too fast. And I said levity. And when I said levity, the viewers said, that's it. We're your levity squad. You're Mr. Levity. This is Levity Hall. And the viewers, or the guests, all of them from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, wherever they're coming from, are now part of our Gym Masters show, Lovety Family. So they've welcomed you into the Lovety Family already with their comments live. So that's where the Lovety came from. You know, sometimes things just happen. You can't even script it. So the audience uh, said, we're your Lovety squad. And that's where that happened. <laughs> Thank you for the backstory and great to meet everyone. And there, there's one other person that wanted to say you did well, kiddo. George Burns was with us this evening. <laughs> <laughs>
And he said uh, he believes in the foundation and, of course, uh, part of the uh, National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences himself and SAG and AFTRA and everything else. And uh, here he is with his cigar. <laughs> and uh, he had a good time tonight. and Learned a lot, too, that he, even George Burns didn't know. <laughs> Always puts a smile on everybody's face when I show George at the end. They don't yeah. expect it. <laughs> he was a class act as well, huh? George Burns. Yep. One of the best. You take care, Doug. Thanks for all the time. We appreciate it. And have a good night, okay? Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye now. And again, the Emmys.tv will uh, show you that one more time. The Emmys.tv is the website. And again, who watched the Emmy Awards? Probably not all of you because you were watching us. We were actually on when the Emmys were on last night. And again, there's the different versions. What was great about what Doug was uh, saying, we thank Doug for joining us here on the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Again, National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Foundation Chairman and President. Uh, that's where the Emmys come from, the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Uh, very involved in the news and sports and public affairs area of it, uh, Doug. But also a retired fire chief for the city of Phoenix, Arizona. He was in the U.S. Air Force and, again, has lived a life of true service. Now, the, the main theme of tonight's show is really talking about the foundation about the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, or NATIS Foundation, uh, and these scholarships. But you know me, I also uh, love for my audience, whether it's this show or my professional work, to get an, a feeling for who the guest is, what you know, what makes them tick, what are they passionate about. So you got a chance to also learn about his uh, illustrious career in the fire services and his role you know, as a fire chief and also a little about some of his other endeavors as well in public relations and television production um, and things of that nature. So really cool stuff. A great guest and a great guy. And again, uh, the overall national Emmys were last night, of course. That was the 73rd primetime. Of course, there's different ones. There's daytime, you know, the daytime Emmys, all the soap operas, all the daytime shows, the game shows, the um, talk shows, all of the daytime shows, the the news programs, the morning shows, you know, Today's Show, Good Morning America, CBS Mornings. And then there's the regional Emmys, uh, you know, in, like in Phoenix, Philadelphia, Hartford, Connecticut, Boston, New York, L.A., you know, each city has its own uh, regional or each division or area of the country has its regional. And then there's localized Emmys as well. So, uh, yeah, it's really cool to, to chat with him. Uh, and the Emmys, you know, with COVID, the Emmys have had to adjust as well, of course, uh, which has been quite interesting. You know, they had to bring it in a little bit more with less people in the room, but um, thanks gang for all of your great comments. So uh, you learned something new tonight, right? The independent awards as well. Fantastic guest. Thank you very much. Good stuff. And um, this is really great. I'm taking a look at some of these comments. You guys are really, really chatting. Yes, we're looking forward to Robin tomorrow as well. You will have another one tomorrow. Robin is in Flagstaff, Arizona. Stay tuned tomorrow for that, Lisa. Thank you very much. Lisa's a lovety here, one of our newest viewers on the show, watching all the time. Uh, and Robin is with us tomorrow. Now, Robin has a beautiful story. Don't, don't miss this one if you can. Again, if you do miss it live, you could watch all these episodes, you know, over 450, 60, 70, 80 that are available and counting on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. But tomorrow night, former soap star and brilliant actress, Robin Griggs Wiley is going to be with us. You know her from One Life to Live. She played Maggie Corey on Another World, countless TV shows, films, so much more. Brilliant actress. But the story tomorrow is also very inspirational and very moving because she has been really 
in the fight for her life, um, dealing with stage four cancer. You know, that, you know, really became the main thrust of her existence in terms of just getting through that. And it's well documented and she's very authentic and very open about sharing that, which is a beautiful thing to inspire other people. She is going to be with us with us tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific live. We're going to, of course, talk about her wonderful career, but also, uh, you know, how she's dealt with this uh, very, what could be, you know, debilitating for some in terms of just folding up the tent. She's tackled it head on to the best of her ability. She's going to be with us tomorrow night with her story, and we look forward to that. It's going to be very moving and inspiring. We'll have levity, all our usual uh, tricks of the trade here at JMS Live. And then on Wednesday from Happy Days, yes, the popular sitcom from the 1970s, Happy Days. You know, we had Anson Williams on our show. Go back in the archives. You can see Anson Williams. Anson Williams was... Patsy on Happy Days, that beloved television series. Marion Ross, who starred as Mrs. C, Mrs. Cunningham. She was on our show as well as a very special guest. We had an epic episode. She wants me to uh, go have wine with her at the Happy Days Ranch. <laughs> I think we will. What I'm, hopefully I can head out west soon on a TV shoot and uh, we'll do that. Got a lot of breaking of bread uh, with a lot of people who've been guests on the Gym Master Show live. East Coast, West Coast, overseas, and in the middle. Donnie Most is with us on Wednesday. He's also a brilliant singer, too. Freda Payne is going to be with us on Thursday. Music legend, singer, and actress. She's our special guest. Friday, a special JMS Live birthday episode. My birthday happens to be this Friday, September 24th. Doesn't it seem like we were just celebrating it together when the voices of classic soul were here last year? This year went by fast. Here it comes again. So that'll be Friday. And then Saturday, famed New York photographer Jeffrey Hornstein is going to be with us at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We're looking forward to that as well. Our YouTube channel, the one you're watching right now, is Gym Masters TV, a channel dedicated to entertaining, informing, educating, and inspiring. We would love it if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's no cost. So don't be fooled by the word subscribe. There's no cost to it. You just click on that. That shows us that you're following and you believe in what we're doing here, our series of uh, entertainment and levity and conversation and bringing back the lost art of conversation and everything else we do. Again, don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share that levity. Don't forget to find your Zen place, mine, of course, with loving family and friends. I also love cycling and tennis and music and writing and a whole host of things. My work in television, radio, stage, and film over the years is also a Zen place for me and also the ocean. I love the ocean. Swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it, floating it, uh, floating in it, on it, whatever it may be. The ocean is a Zen place for me. So find your Zen place, gang, and share it with the world. Yes. All right. Check a couple more comments here. Hey, we got a super sticker from Kathleen Walker. Thank you very much. Your comment rises to the top. Big, bold, red, which is actually perfect since our guest was the fire chief for Phoenix, Arizona, Doug Mummert. And uh, <laughs> and there is your fire red. That is fantastic. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Uh, that's the super stickers. That is something, if you look in chat, in the chat section of our show when we're live, there's something called super stickers, super chat, super emojis, and super thanks. That helps support the Gym Master Show live. All of the equipment, the technical, the Wi-Fi, the production, the everything that we do behind the scenes to put this series, this incredible series together, that's what that is. And um, those of you who have done that, thank you very much. We appreciate that. That's very kind of you to do that. So uh, your comment rises to the top. Uh, it's in color. And I personally thank you on the air, Kathleen Walker in New York City, for that generous uh, super sticker. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. That'll go to good use, uh, upgrading equipment and more here at the show. Um, Maureen in Arizona says, this was a great show. I really enjoyed hearing about Doug's amazing work. So proud that he's from my home state. 
Thank you, Jim, for having him as your guest this evening. A pleasure, all mine, Maureen, as always. And Kathleen, again, great show, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Toby says tomorrow will be deep. Yes, deep with humor, levity, fun, and all of the rest. All of the rest. And Jim, be on the lookout. For, we'll send you information about my friend, Abone Martinez. That sounds great. Be a cool guest, right, from SAG. Absolutely. And uh, good stuff. Have a great night, Jim, and uh, good night all and hugs. Thank you very much. Another great night. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Gang, if you ever miss any of our episodes, they're all available on our YouTube channel for you, Jim Masters TV. That's right. You can spend weeks binge watching. Go back to some of the earlier episodes. See how our show has grown and, um, you know, just grown in, in production and <laughs> all of it. Uh, amount of time spent. Um, thank you, Jim, for another wonderful conversation. Very informative tonight. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having, uh, again, Doug Mummert on the show from Phoenix, Arizona, uh, chairman and president of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences uh, Foundation to learn about the incredible scholarships as well. Really, really Good stuff. Good stuff. You guys are the best. If you haven't subscribed, we would love it if you do. The channel is Jim Masters TV. Keep spreading the word, gang. We're one happy family here at JMS Live. We always have a good time. If you enjoyed this episode or any of the episodes that uh, you've been watching, maybe binge watching, whether you're watching live or you're watching, you know, in the archives, hey, give it a thumbs up on our YouTube channel. That means well, I can't really tell you what it really means. It's big time. You know why? Because then YouTube takes the episode and they blast it out to even more people so more people can see it. When you give it a thumbs up and when you leave a comment on the YouTube channel, not just during chat, but on the YouTube channel, ah, that really helps get the word out about the Gym Master Show live. All right. A couple more I think coming in here, and then we will say sayonara. Good night, all, and sweet dreams from Sherry Larson. Thank you very much. And uh, Toby says, guests are liking this platform of the Gym Master Show Live. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. I appreciate that. You guys are the very best. Again, thanks to uh, Kathleen for the super sticker tonight. We appreciate that. There it is. Super sticker. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And we appreciate all of you. You have a good night, gang. All right. We'll see you again. We're back tomorrow night with another amazing guest. You're going to love it. Yes. Robin is going to be with us tomorrow and it's going to be fantastic. Thanks for being with us. Your host here, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. We really appreciate you being with us. It's always cool, you know, hanging out together here on the Gym Master Show live nightly. It's always a blessing, and you guys be well, okay? We're going to uh, get out of Dodge. <laughs> well, we're going to stay here and Dodge. We're just going to say ciao, take care, be well to one another, uh, love one another, and uh, spread the kindness, share the levity, all right? Have a good night, gang. We love you all. Cheers. <laughs>